Time for another interview on The Informer, this time a range of topics that uh, we want to discuss with the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Sally Cap, who's about to notch two years in office. Now, looking hard at the latest initiatives from Town Hall, it's clear to me that the city has been driven by a Lord Mayor who understands the fundamentals of getting people back to work. The draft uh, budget has just been released and uh, you know, of course they'll need to create initiatives and find ways to provide people with opportunities that will encourage them to get back to actually competing for business and providing their skills and offering their services to the public. And it's also pretty clear that the Lord Mayor has been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, making sure that she's working as closely as possible with her constituents, whether it be in commerce and industry and business, to ensure that Melbourne can actually overcome the challenges that this COVID-19 crisis has created and provide them with the necessary tools to get back to work. Importantly, they will also need to find a new pathway, a new way of doing things which will allow them to prosper. Sally, this initiative, this courage that you've shown throughout your career, uh, where did it first start? Where did it first reveal itself? Was it the Presbyterian Ladies College in the early days? Well, courage is a big word. I'm not sure it's, it's that I necessarily see it that way, but I, I definitely have a, a confidence. I have a resolve about things and uh, it did start young. I've got parents who always encouraged me to get involved, but I think essentially make mistakes and that's okay. Just keep trying and, and that gives you that sense of uh, that even if you fail that there are good lessons to learn from that and it's, it won't defeat you and you should keep keep moving forward with the lessons that you learn and then in environments like PLC which they're just completely uh, one that the world is enormous and yes. the possibilities are huge uh, and two it really arms you with the skill sets again and the tools and the attitude uh, that you can do anything, but importantly for me through that education, it was very much also about making a contribution. Mm. And uh, so you bring those things together with a whole lot of hard knocks and humiliations through my career, and you do tend to build up a bit of resolve and, and confidence to step into things. Well, you stepped up and got uh, great, great experience, and you met some wonderful people in those early days of your legal career with one of the best uh, legal firms in the country. And uh, I can remember once before when we spoke, you said to me, there was a time there when you thought you deserved to, to get uh, some more recognition, but you didn't quite know how to get there. Yes. And yet someone close to you helped you along the way. They did. Just reveal that story. I do. Well, look, uh, again, it was a time uh, in my work life where I uh, saw, crystallised to me that I am absolutely responsible for my own career mm -hmm. and I'm responsible for my own happiness. And it was a time when I was working very long hours. I seemed to be doing quite well in my job. My performance reviews were regularly good. And right. yet I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't achieving any of the, the ambitions that I had to work on different types of transactions or get seconded to a client or move to different parts of the firm. And my wonderful boss, who's still a great mentor of mine, uh, when I came to my fourth performance review and he said, just keep going, uh, you're doing a great job. But he didn't talk to me about any of the other opportunities available. I uh, did, after months of resentment and built up of frustration, I did what every articulate, well-educated young woman does. You broke down. I sobbed, I broke into tears, I lost my composure completely. Um, and that shook him. It did. And at that moment, I looked at him and I saw he was shocked. And I realised he didn't know what those aspirations were that I had inside. He's not a mind reader. Mm. And whilst a lot of management practices have changed since then and we incorporate development opportunities into every conversation, the fact is people aren't mind readers and they can't know your aspirations and dreams unless you find a way of telling them. Yeah, express yourself. And it's been a big, that was a big learning and I've had years of practicing, culminating of course, in the courage to stand up in front of everyone and say, I'd like to be the Lord Mayor of Melbourne. And that exactly. was two years ago. What, it is almost, I think, the day after tomorrow, it'll be two years to the day. That's right, that I was sworn in and it's been an amazing experience. All right, how much of, and I, and I said courage early on, uh, you don't become the first female board member of the Collingwood Football Club <laughs> if you haven't got a little bit of 
you know, steel <laughs> inside. It, because when you join the board, they were on their way back, but they hadn't come all the way back. Mm. And for a woman to face this board of men, it took a little bit of something. So that's why I say it's so important. Uh, do you think it's, it, it's also special that you've had the experience and you've seen how that's tempered you? Are you going to be able to use this, this knowledge now to get Melbourne City back on the road to recovery? Well, look, it, it's going to take all of us, the best efforts of oh. all of us uh, to get Melbourne uh, back on track after this massive disconnect we've had as a result of a global you pandemic. You said massive. Give us an idea of the numbers pre-COVID-19 yeah. that Melbourne City was generating. Well, pre-COVID to now just seems so long ago. And as we know, it's a matter mm. of weeks. Yeah, yeah. So uh, pre-COVID, so earlier this year, we clicked over $100 billion in gross local product in our municipality. We had a thriving economy. We had the far we were the fastest growing city in Australia, one of the fastest in the world. We had 950,000 people moving around our city every day. And that foot traffic sustained an economy that we look back now in our analysis and realize so much of our economy is made up of people getting together. Major events, food and hospitality, big retail offers, tourism and education is really the Huge. cornerstone. It's about people coming together. And that's been a lovely thing for Melbourne, but it means we're disproportionately impacted by COVID because in April, our foot traffic got as low as 50,000 people, which is our lowest on record. So that's almost an 80%, 90% drop from what you've seen. Just more than 90%, in... yeah. Wow. Yeah, so okay. devastating. Now, two years in, You've got a draft budget, I think, that's just been introduced. Has, you, yeah. You've just brought it down. What are, you, what are you putting in place? What are the sorts of initiatives? What are the sorts of things that you can do? I mean, state government's got to help. Federal government's got to come to the assistance, especially when we talk about our capital cities. What is being done behind the scenes that we don't know about? Yeah. It's going to get your constituents back up on the road to recovery. Yeah, well, some key things. Yeah. I think the budget really represents uh, survival to revival, okay. we call it. Okay. And if it could happen in the next 12 months, this next financial year, that would be brilliant. We are pragmatic. We realise that it's going to take a lot longer than that, but there are measures in this budget to really represent, again, those aspirations for the city. The survival phase is so important, and there are two aspects to that. One is we don't want to add to the burden of any of our ratepayers, and that's why okay, we've so done a rate freeze. Yep. And we've also got a rates hardship policy for one-off cases uh, of, of people who really are, find themselves in an extreme situation. So. That's one part. Let's not add to the, mm. the burden. And that is the same for fees and charges. Many of them we're keeping the same. We've, we've uh, eradicated almost 10%. Uh, we're looking at all our permit um, um, terms and conditions yep. and all those sorts of things. We're making sure that we keep our essential services going, and yep. that's vital because there are people rel that rely I've on noticed, us every day. I've noticed these crews decked out in their busy If you tops. don't have a fluoro jacket on in Melbourne at the moment, you are not important.